Welcome to Abia's Ambiance. I'm so glad you could join me once again. This is our final episode. I know, today is so amazing. But for our final episode, I gift you with our final guests. We have Kali. And today we'll be talking on insecurities and fears. Mm -hmm. Now, the last episode was extremely deep, and I don't want to get into the mud just yet. So let's talk about light fears. I'm scared of cockroaches. I, I don't I don't do cockroaches. snakes, bro. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, people uh, or animals? Yeah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are we allowed to cuss? Yeah. Oh, cool, yeah. Fuck snakes, bro. Both of them. Yeah, both of them, both of them, yeah. Worms. Worms? What the hell? Yeah, I get it, I get it. Because I'm going to move around like this. And what do you mean? They're in their place. Frogs are so cute, guys. I have. Frogs are really cute, guys. Frogs are amazing. Yeah, I definitely have to use frogs. So most of the time there's birds like coming so, through the house. Yeah, kind of. no, I can see that child. Just taking a nap on the couch. <laughs> no, no, I never looked in a bird's eye, they were like, they're scary. Don't <laughs> cross <laughs> the queen to a bird. Like why they just chill and start wearing why the fuck are you staring a bird into Why are you picking up dead birds? Exactly. No, I am respecting the dead, Jay. Go bury the bird. Yeah. Oh, what though? I want the like, Listen, exactly. I'm an animal person. Listen, I've had a parrot, oh I've had God. fish, I've had, I have dogs, kind of, yeah. right? Like, I have, yo, dude, and my buddy died so cool, guys. It really hurts my heart. My buddy had a seizure. Ah! <laughs> Not your buddy acting like a hamster child. No. Respect the 
Like my fear of failure mm-hmm. drove me to excellence. Yeah. Yeah. That was me with English. Like I remember in, in like hostel, I was the only one awake at like two, and then I was like, no, let me be serious. Let me go to bed. The first dream I had, I like, no, wake up. Let's go back to the books. Let's <laughs> let's learn another poem. Like anxiety that pushes yeah, yeah. Like, like you feel like anxious about you know what the outcome will be if you actually don't study, if you actually don't work as hard as you know you're able to work, you know? Yeah, especially because yeah. it was finals and like it determines your future, future. Guys? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, no guys. guys. No one said it be easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's really not nice. It isn't. Mm-mm. When can you speak from experience? It's okay. okay. Speaking from experience. <laughs> so like, how did you get through that moment of failure? Like you looked at your ear like, mm. shit, dude. Like, how did you Once get through Once you realize that this life is a life of chances, you feel me? You get me? Like, bro, as long as you yourself can get up and stand up and redo it and try again, mm-hmm. no feeling and shit, bro. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. As long as you can try again, this is a this is a life of chances. Mm-hmm. As many times as you can fail, you can still succeed. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I understand the fear of failing, but don't be afraid afraid to fail because when you fail, you learn from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can do even better the next time you try again. I'm going to lie to you. True. I, I beat myself up hard. Yeah, it's just like, I feel like with me, knowing that I fear failure, I have this expectation, right? If I know I'm going to fail, I don't try. Yeah. yeah. Like, realistically speaking. Yeah. But how do you know you're going to fail if you haven't tried? It's like, it, it, it it's not like you're okay. limiting yourself, yes. But your failure is not nice, especially disappointment. I feel yeah. disappointment. It's yeah. not a nice feeling. Who exactly are really you is disappointing yourself or oh, others? Was, I think more of myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yourself. You know, mm-hmm. you know, like living a life of being the best, yeah, mm-hmm. and then that like, one time you just fall. It's not a nice feeling. Mm-hmm. You know, with that, it? I feel like I feel other people disappointing, like me, mm-hmm. which is why I feel like I don't let a lot of people in because you know, like. For me, like time is a big thing, and I feel like when you waste my time, it's the worst thing because it's like you're all of that energy into someone who wasn't even like 
with it, whether it be like my friend or any type of person like that comes into my life, it feels like I've wasted energy that I could have put into something else. You know what I mean? Like my time, my love, my care, like mm. that's what I feel. I feel wasting my time a lot. Like I feel like that has to be my biggest fear. I mean, you know, this life, you know, time is bound to be wasted. You know. I and mean, you shouldn't repeat wasting your time on care and someone or something because it was bound to happen one way or another. The time that we live on this earth right, might seem very limited, but we don't know what happens after that. Yeah. You know, we have ideas. That's how I feel. You are to die in the middle of the True. You can tell me what you want about heaven, you can tell me what you want about how I think it's still scary. Because scares 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 you know how much of a chance that there is that there's no heaven, there's no hell. Mm, it's it's not not just, just there. What do I do? I is feel it like I've, I've become so grateful of that. Hey, mm. yeah, says literally nothing. Expect nothing from me. No, I'm gone. You know, I I, 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 I believe in reincarnation, mm -hmm. but if there's that possibility that if I die, I'm done, it, it feels like a relief because yeah. mm -hmm. as someone who believes in reincarnation, I'm going to go through a different struggle in a, a different, different life. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now, if I'm really just dead, wow, thank God. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah. I feel like that yeah. is yeah. 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 Like, I feel like the yeah. fact that at some point in your life, like everything that you have been through will be just over. Like you won't have to continue to go through things like... And you'll start again. Exactly, like, like you will just be gone. Yeah. yeah. I believe that um, in life, don't let anything hold you back. Mm -hmm. you know? As well. Don't let anything, don't do the whatever the hell that you want to do. That's why you don't. That's why you have lived their own lives. Right. You know? yeah. They think that you're going to be like them. That's why they're trying to tell you not to do some things, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. which is very wrong. You should be able to forge your own path forward mm -hmm. into your own life and go into who you want to be. Yeah. Because at the end of it all, you know, bro, at the end of it all, we won. We won. Mm -hmm. Not even that, dog. Why are we here? You know, we're here to live. So yeah. I think that's another one. Like, well, I feel like another fear is like never being able to figure out. Why am I Yeah, like I do not like my friends. Why like, this like, question is so it's like, it's like, I think uh, you have no purpose. I don't think it's not you do you don't. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, there's so many things that say you do not exactly. like, like, why do you No, why my you problem think is they expect yeah. us to know what we want to do at this age. Yeah. Guys, we're 18, 19 years old. Exactly. And we're 18, 19 years old. Like, what you want to do. Exactly. Where you're going to be. 30 plus years, 40 plus years. For the rest of my life, bro, when I'm 19 and a half. At 40, you can literally sit on your bed, face your and mirror, and still, still, still not, not know. know. Exactly. And still not know. Yeah, yeah. Like on your deathbed, you'd be like, what was my purpose? What was my purpose? Some, what was my purpose? Some, people, some people died 80 and not living the life that they wanted to live. That's my worst fear. It's like, because I. It's this thing of allowing people to hold you back mm. from doing the things that you want to do. Also, allowing, like, okay, like. Personally, mm -hmm. you know, I stopped believing in some things because I felt that they were holding me back from being me. Mm -hmm. If I want to be a bad person, this is just an example. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like I should be able to be a bad person and just be a bad person and change. Mm -hmm. you know, I shouldn't have to feel that, oh, if I'm a bad person, you know, I'm going to go to hell. Yeah. 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 I'm going to be a bad person full force because I want to be a bad person. Yeah. You know? And those are the type of things that hold people back from actually living their life. That child of holding back. It's fear. That fear. It's literally, this is like my breakthrough moment right mm -hmm. now with you guys sitting here because I never thought of sharing my poetry publicly. I never thought of going out there, you know? And so, little by little, I've gotten the confidence. You know, I did, if this is really something you want to pursue, nobody else is gonna do it for you. Yeah. You know, you gotta, you gotta, 
you're gonna allow opportunity to come your way. Mm -hmm. If you keep closing the doors and say it's not for me, um, it's not my, it's been nothing or yeah. So you need to allow opportunity to come your way. And this right here. Was my so I just want to say thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to say thank you. Yeah. Like, just want to say thank you. Because <laughs> yeah, it's it's me accepting that my fears will never control. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think mm -hmm. that's one of my biggest fears: the lack of control, like yes. control in certain situations. Like in how life is supposed to. That's the thing. That's the problem. That's the problem. It's like mm -hmm. because along with not having control in certain situations you feel like you don't know how to like adapt to them or how to like react to them if you get that i feel like when i don't have control in a certain situation like control of my surroundings my feelings how everyone else is around me that's when i feel like i'm gonna spiral because you know i don't just that, that, that lack of control and i feel like in life there will be no such thing as having full control over everything. Mm -hmm. Because in as much as you know you and I yourself, you can try your best to control what happens around you, there are outside factors as well. Yeah. There are other people, yeah. there are other things that are going to happen. And I think that's one thing I always have to think about, like, so you're not on this world alone. Mm -hmm. You're not here alone. There are other people, there are going to be different situations in life that you will have no control over and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. And I think also along with that comes with change and like fear yeah, of change. change. Because even with uni guys, like I'm so anxious about mm -hmm. uni. I'm like, you know, I feel anxious. like it's the rebirth. Yeah, of, exactly, it's the me. rebirth. Yeah. And yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's so scary because at the same time, We've been in a certain phase in our life for so long. Like primary, it's just an exactly we've been, we've been so used to something for so long. 18 years, guys. Now all of a sudden, boom, change. No. You know what that? You're alone now. Yeah. No. no. With that, I feel like for me, it's extremely exciting because it feels like I get to be a new person in a new environment. I feel like the old me that was me, like in high school and primary, is like officially dead. Now I'm welcome to be more myself. I feel like in school, like you're always put in like a certain group box. Yeah, you're put in a box and you have to act a certain way or else you're just not accepted, unfortunately. Like you have to act a certain way, you have to speak to certain people or else you just, you know, won't be liked as much or you won't be put on top of the hierarchy. You know I mean? And the thing is that as teenagers, we want to be accepted. Exactly. Yeah. Wherever, wherever we exactly. go, we want to be. As much as people can say, yeah, I don't want to be accepted, right now in this age that we're in, we want to be liked. You want to be you wanna like you're like wow, I'm, yes, you I'm liked by this. Exactly. Exactly. But like that's that's a growth part of it. Like if I were to look at my grade seven myself and my now self, mm -hmm. I've grown so much. Cause even like grade seven, I considered everybody my friend. Mm -hmm. Like we chat, we we're, we're homies. Like in grade seven, if I were to count like. Who are my homies? I would tell you about 20, 25 names, maybe even the bro, like nice. be, be, yeah. that, especially yeah. as like a a friendly, outspoken person, yeah. right? Yeah. It's easy to attract people, yeah. but none of them are loyal to you. Exactly. They just around exactly. you, you know, they're absorbing your energy. Mm -hmm. So right now, from then till now, that that friend group became mm -hmm. and smaller. God. Not even became small. Oh my God! 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 God. Yeah. Yeah. Now you, now you, you've defined like who's real and mm. who's yeah. not. Yeah. So like this, this like okay. oh that one. Yep. I'm keeping that. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's the thing. Like in high school, you're forced to be friends. Like that's how. Like I feel like when you're in high school, because you're in a closed environment where you see each other all the time, you have no choice but to make friends. So now it's so easy for you to be like you know because I spoke to you today and we had a nice chat with my friend we just spoke to you you're my friend and now you get so caught up in everything and then you start realizing very slowly that these people are not your friends mm -hmm. and fortunately they I just like when the distance comes and the silence comes like after you you know mm -hmm. down with high school mm -hmm. you don't share the same time to you know, you don't sit in the quad and eat lunch together mm -hmm. you realize who your friends are people who check up on you yeah mm -hmm. you're like hey buddy so how's uni how you coping mm -hmm. stuff like that i feel like Sooner or later, it's something that you have to accept. And yeah. I feel like people fear acceptance. Mm -hmm. Always in denial that mm -hmm. something is not what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And we struggle with that as being, you know. But like at the same struggle. time, 
we can't always essentially be the one who's messaging first or whatever because I I know like even like in this past year every time like for example my cousin right? so even though we went to the same school we barely ever spoke because we had different friend groups and my mom would always be like oh yeah message her see how she's doing i'm like okay but why can't she message me and see how she's doing yeah. I, can't, I can't always be the one i always say this but i can't always be the one like swimming someone has to be swimming with me because that's what you want to do i can't be swimming in an ocean and you're just jumping and you're just jumping but also, it'd be a thing of like you're different, but they're, they're not yours. Yeah. 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 And it's a go for that one. Yeah. And it's like they just want that one. Like, yeah. yeah. My mom told me about that type of thing. So in the relationships, you know, like you know, like even though you care, but that person never really considered you afraid. Yeah. Like, mm. It happened. I feel like they just want what you can offer. Like they want what you can bring to them. Just like the first time, time people for them. will support you in it. And all these church, different kind of relationships we develop, whether it be family, friends, or anything, it in some way most of those people contribute to your insecurity. That section of our topic, insecurities. Mm. What are some things that you've noticed that it's not really you who is really ins- like insecure about it? You you just like someone was making these remarks or and they pointed it. Yeah, out. Like, but now you're like you're also like looking at yourself and like you're like hey, that happens. Mm. I feel like dysmorphia, like when you look in the mirror and then you see something completely different, like you see something that's not there. I feel like you know when you are uh, with a group of people and they say things that might hurt you, you start viewing yourself as that. As that. And when someone says, "Oh, Mateo, you're so loud," now suddenly. When you Every speak, you feel you like you try to be soft. Yeah, yeah, like now you feel like, yeah. yo, what if I'm actually being loud? In reality, I just feel like people will always try and dumb you down as much as they can when they see that you're a bright you're thriving. Exactly. Yeah. Like even when I was at school, like I used to feel like, yo, what if I'm too much of this? What if I'm too much of that? Mm-hmm. So now you try and like calm down and be like, you know, let me not be as friendly, let me not be as bubbly, let me not be as talkative because maybe these people won't like me because of that. I feel like that plays a big part. I feel like. Um, People do play a role in how you view yourself every single day, right? Very much. But with that being said, I don't really mind. You know? The thing is, I always have like an attitude. Like, like, attitude. I'm very much unapologetic about who I am as a person. But right? how did you get to that point? Could because I feel like, like um, guys, I don't want to sound like that person, but it starts at home sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like with me and my mom, my mom and I have a very close relationship, right? Like she's my best friend. So one thing that my mom does to me and did to me as I was younger, she always used to affirm me about different things. So she'd always tell me I'm beautiful. She'd always tell me I'm the best. I'm, I'm stellar, you know? Mm-hmm. And as soon as you hear these things from a young age, of course, when growing up, you're going to believe these things, guys. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So, and obviously it's one thing um, for your parents to say these things about you. But once you actually recognize them yourself, and you're like, no, but I actually am top two and not two. I actually am the baddest, you know? <laughs> so that's always been me. But I think it only started coming about like in the trick last year because I know with like a lot of people, I only started becoming close of talking to a lot of people last year, right? Mm-hmm. Grade 10, grade 11, I was like, in my bubble with my friends and stuff until I looked at myself in the mirror. I was like, Motel, people are gonna know you. People are gonna know what you're like. People are gonna know this and that about you. And that's okay, bro. So then I also kept on affirming myself. I was like, you're gonna be confident in everything that you say and in everything that you do. Now you hear me making a rust in history, making a rust in English, and I don't care because that's who I am as a person, you know? So the chat of like, like for me, it was during my high school career, I was a very mysterious person. Like not many people knew a lot about me. I projected what I wanted them to see because yeah. that's how, that's what they're attracted to. Mm. And I realized that it's me who's attracting that bad energy they get yes. because I'm, I'm giving off the persona they want. Yeah. And the persona they want is it's not, not what you it's, it's not me, it's not what I want. Yeah. So once I stopped like showing this like superficial superficial person mm-hmm. and they started seeing me then they're like okay 
maybe we don't click. Okay, maybe we click and that's where you yeah. form like a real bond. I feel like you know trick that's when I found like my real friends because I stopped acting like someone else, like someone that other people wanted me to be. I stopped trying to please other people. I feel like when I was in like throughout high school, mm. uh, my main thing was to try and make everybody around me comfortable. Mm. Like you know what I mean? Like I always wanted to make sure everybody was happy with me. Yeah. And that's a difficult task because everybody has different requirements. That's so just so I feel like yeah, in the trick, like once I started friends. becoming friends with like people who have strong personalities, I started realizing that yo, there's no need for me to be doing this. Mm. Like I don't have to make everybody around me feel comfortable. As long as I am as comfortable, as you're comfortable, you must follow like you know the procedure, like yeah. standard. Like I feel like everybody should know what I'm about. Yeah. And I feel like with that, and then I started like realizing that I don't have to act a certain way for certain people. I just have to be myself, and the right people will come to me. Mm. That's yeah. true. You are what you attract. You are what you attract. Yeah. Literally, you are what you attract. I wanna share something deep. Well, it's not really that deep, but like, it stayed with me for a very long time and it was hard for me to shake it off. That's why I remember it so vividly. It was a fight in grade five, mm-hmm. okay? Sure. And we were fighting over a boy. Oh. Well, not I was fighting. He was my man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't her man. Yeah. yeah. So, so then, this time said, she said, and I remember it so so vividly she said to me people only like you because of your body in grade five you and like 11 years old that like that like hey sexualized at such a young age actually something small like you know you're a potato Yeah, like it stayed with me for a very long time because like now you're evaluating why would people why would she say that? Mm-hmm. Now you're thinking to yourself, like the people who are mature attra- Yeah, the people who are mature attra- are they really attracted to me? Like like you she start like second thinking everything mm-hmm. everybody says. Like mm-hmm. yeah, now true. when I'm reading a text from someone who genuinely likes me like but they want me emotionally or sexually? What's, yeah, what's and then you know, know trust issues mm, come in, and then exactly. That's but true. that was so I, at such a young age. Yeah, that was very right. so upside. Yes. Like, yes. how did you even come up with that? <laughs> like, <laughs> come up with it. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, like, when it comes to I insecurities, think. I think people point out their insecurities onto you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 It is, because it's like, when we were kids, you know, they always said that a bully who bullies you is always getting bullied themselves. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So it comes with that way, it's just rooted. Mm-hmm. But with that statement, I felt like it was justifying why they were bullying personally. Because mm-hmm. you're saying, this bully is bullying me because they've been bullied. Am I supposed to be like, okay? Bully. Yeah, yeah bully. <laughs> because you're being bully. No, I felt like that one, when it was repeated so many times by teachers. And I, like, now that I think about it, I'm like, are you justifying why this bully is bullying? What do you want me to do at this point? Because I don't even know who's bullying them. And I can't help them because they're so exactly. angry at me for some reason. Like, they bully me. For some reason, what am I supposed to do in this situation? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why are you mad that I exist? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, this is not your home here. No, <laughs> actually, no, really? no, it's the thing of your father used to tell us that people who are getting bullied usually have a bad situation at home. Yeah. yeah. So you tell them that, oh, this is not your home. You don't have to take your frustration. But then, don't you us. think that's the problem, well. though? Like, how we are all brought up at home. It's how we mm. treat people on the outside. It is. Or so how we act majority of the time. I think time. majority. think like about your insecurities mm. as a person. Mm. Mm. How your father treats you. How your mother treats you. Mm. That's yes. who you are as a person. I agree. Yeah. I feel like with insecurities, definitely. Mm. Okay. 
Mm. I think with insecurities, I feel like it definitely grows with you. But I feel like the way you act towards other people yeah. is something you can grow out of because now, obviously, like you're a product of your environment. But when you get to school, you're with so many different personalities. Yeah. And when you meet those personalities, like, oh, these people are not, they're not like me. Mm. So obviously, you're going to want to like change your mentality. You're going to be like, maybe I should try because so and so like, do anything. Exactly. Yeah. So, so why like, you know? Are you? So I feel like you can really change. Oh, like, it's <laughs> In like the previous episode, um, Nondi, a guest, said that you shouldn't justify your actions by what you do. So yes, mm, like my parents out. treat me like this, mm-hmm. but yeah. that is not a reason for yeah. me. Yeah. 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 What yeah. does yeah. 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 like that? It should rather yes. serve as an example of yeah. what you should not be. Yes, that's true. You around so many different people. That's very true. But then think about this, guys. Okay, this is just an example, right? Okay. This boy comes out of a house, right? In this house, the par- um, let's say the father's an alcoholic, mm-hmm. right? You grow up as a son thinking, yeah, I'm gonna stay away from alcohol, da, da, da. But no, eventually you become an alcoholic. Do you hear what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's not really about, okay, me as a person, I'm trying to stay away from all the things that, bad, like, bad things that happen to me. Mm-hmm. But it's my norm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's my environment. Yes, it's, it's my environment. Mm-hmm. I, as much as I'll try to, you know, hide it like, let's say if I grew up in an abusive home and I try so hard not to be a violent person, mm-hmm. I'm gonna become a violent person. I guess it's, you know what I'm it's just how it is. But that's mm-hmm. the importance of dealing with your yeah. trauma. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the shit we were actually talking about yeah. in like, mm-hmm. the previous episode. It's like, now that you've gone through shit, are you gonna pass that to your kids? Mm-hmm. Not. That's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like at this, at the point where you realize, yo, dude, I'm actually a bit more fucked up than I think I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like go, go get yeah. some help. You know what I'm saying? Talk because because so now so you 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 make this like, <laughs> oh, um, my father used to beat my mother. So if you want to beat me in front of the kids, that's like the kind of and yeah. I just want to highlight though, like with alcoholism and drug abuse mm-hmm. yeah. it can actually be passed down not necessarily like they did it in front of you but it can be but like it can be passed down yeah, yeah. I definitely agree I think mm-hmm. I agree mm-hmm. I just wanted to clarify that mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking about something like you know back in the day like you know what you know Uncle was telling me a story about like you know before in you know, the times if you dated a hand you know they think you didn't love them if you didn't like abuse them. Yeah, oh. like that thing, if, he's, if he's mean to you, it means he likes you. Oh, oh that's what oh. I mean. Oh, he's being mean to me. Like, 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 he likes you. Yeah. 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 How do you push it into the playground like, that you like? But you like me. <laughs> Imagine, imagine if I dump you, eh? Yeah. Because you refuse to hit a hand. To hit a hand. That's crazy. Uh, that's crazy. That's so I don't think it does. <laughs> I get the whole thing of like, okay, when a girl bullies you, she likes you, when a guy bullies you, she likes you. eventually results in that person like feeling like emotionally abused or mentally abused mm-hmm. not knowing that that is just joking just, just, I, I think that's why I found you know? like, that's why I found like I feel like like boundaries sh- yeah it's like boundaries like, that, because like, like yes yeah. uh, I hate you you're so dumb but uh, next thing the hey. person goes home mama get like, dumb <laughs> 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 it's like it's oh my gosh kill yourself what? 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 Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the point is yeah, yeah, yeah. also 
point. You what you were we saying understand. You. Mm-hmm. We understand your point. Yeah. I think what's some, something that can be harmless to you is very harmful to someone. So someone yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. That's like yeah. it's like in school, you know, we're kids. Kids are dumb. Like we say the most dumbest things to each other. That's you know, so. like we joke as friends as well, friend groups. Mm-hmm. But you don't really know what you said to that person. If they think if you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say, just don't say, say anything, anything at all. That's why I'm, I say like always establish the type of relationship you have with someone. Yes. I feel like if you can see that you and I are joking and we, we have that relationship, then it's okay. Yeah. But if it's someone that you don't know, who are you? Yeah, who are you? Like, like, no, no. <laughs> no, no. We are giant. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yes. Like, like especially if I don't know you like that, I feel like it's so important. Everybody knows, like, oh, this person I can joke like this. Especially if you we talk like that, like you know. On a daily basis, and some yeah. of you, like, I feel like some people do it on purpose. Like you know, you and I don't have that relationship. Yeah. But you're coming here to like you know. Pushing it. You're pushing it a bit. Now you have an agenda, and I don't see. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I feel like that's also a problem. Okay. So, thank you guys for joining me. Such a lovely episode to wrap it up. I want you guys to open up to us. Name one insecurity you have gotten through or are like going through, like you're growing from it and you feel slowly but surely you're, it's no longer becoming an insecurity. We'll start with you. Hi. (laughs) (laughs) Thing is, I want to start with somebody else because I feel like other people have nights on but anyways. My insecurity is like, it's literally my physical and my body because I grew up with like my mom, for example, like literally anything I wore, even to this day, like if I go out without a bra, she'll look at me and be like, ah, yeah, bra, you know, I'm mm. like, I have salutes, so what? Yeah. I don't care. You know, I'm starting not to care about everything like that she's been mentioning mm. and stuff like Like it's still pretty hard because I don't fit the beauty standard for like a mile. Mm-hmm. But like I'm, I'm starting to accept that this is my own standard, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to be happy within that standard because it won't change unless like I can be comfortable enough to start changing it. And at that point, like that's where I guess I'm growing. Mm-hmm. Like it's still the biggest insecurity, you know, but like I'm still growing from it. So yeah. Uh, one insecurity I've grown from is my complexion. I was very insecure about the dark skin. I even built a poem, which I put yeah, on. Her. Can check it out Amazing. on mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know what? When I was watching that video of my performance, right? When people giggled at certain things, they thought I was lying about the shit I did. Like in that poem, I mentioned bleach. I mentioned like going through like some kind of cocaine phase. Mm-hmm. And that shit really happened. Like mm-hmm. I'm not lying about it like i did do that to try change my complexion and i'm so glad that i love how i look yeah Yeah, you know because i've accepted that this is my color and it's gorgeous you know it's gorgeous so yeah no okay yeah (laughs) um i think one of my biggest insecurities that i'm learning to grow over is my identity you know, um, growing up being, you know, half Nigerian, half South African, you move around places where people tell me who you are. Yeah. You know, if I go back home to like uh, my dad's side, you're not Nigerian. If I come back here to SA, you're not South African, you know. And it has, it really was a big thing that like, when I introduced myself you know, as my first name, I always used to be so hesitant mm. to do that. Like, mm. should I just introduce myself as my second name? Because I mean, this is South Africa, mm. right? Just clarify what your second name is. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so now I've learned to just proudly introduce myself as who I am and just learn to love outside of me and not have to be insecure about what other people have to say. Mm-hmm. And also, like, you know, opinions mm-hmm. at the same time, like, oh, she doesn't speak enough. So I'm not, which mm-hmm. speak enough. Mm-hmm. I don't really care. I don't have to prove that to anyone. Like, mm-hmm. oh guys, I can speak to them. I don't have to prove that anymore. It's like, you either hear me say a phrase, a sentence, maybe, mix it with English. Sure. <laughs> that, it's fine. Clap. But it's me. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's okay. So I'm learning to just accept that part of myself. Yeah. Um, for me, it's the way I, I am, my looks. Mm-hmm. I'm, le- I'm le- still learning how to get over that, you know. Mm-hmm. Like right now, it's uh, pretty 
be boys or boys. <laughs> but I didn't grow up like that, you know. Mm. You get caught in a bunch of different things when you're growing up, you know, and that shit sticks. Yeah. That shit really sticks. So, you know, I started trying to make myself feel more comfortable with who I am and accepting the things that I can't change. Yeah. You know, so that's a big part of me and I'm glad that, you know, I'm learning to get over it and change how I view myself. <coughs> yeah. Okay, oh, it's me already. Yeah. <laughs> With me, like I said, like I'm always like apologetic or oh, unapologetically myself, you know. But for the longest of time, I was only like that in front of like, um, you know, people who I know or like who I'm comfortable around. And for some reason, for the longest of time, I was always insecure about like how people would perceive me and like how my personality is, right? So one thing that I've been currently like overcoming is learning how to be myself at all times. Like not having to put up a front, not having to like water myself down, you know, like wherever I go, I'm just gonna be 100% me. Cause for some reason, for the longest of time, I was just so insecure about like having opinions and you know, having different thoughts and being so outspoken, right? Because everyone knows me for being outspoken, like just talking my shit. But now I've learned that, you know, that's, that's one thing that's so powerful and unique about me and I should embrace mm -hmm. it. And another thing which I remember like, I, like I remember mentioning this to my friends and they were so shocked, right? One insecurity that I'm currently overcoming is like my legs. Because I have like, okay, I'm wearing long pants. Yeah, because <laughs> <legs. laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah, because but, legs. um, you know, they call them his his legs, right? Yeah. So, so it's oh, like, he's, 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 he's like this, right? Like, and straight. So, like, when I, because I always look at girls and you guys' legs are like this, right? Mm -hmm. Mine, however, they like go in like mm -hmm. that, like my knees. So, this year, I remember telling my friends about it. I was like, bro, oh, like, one of my biggest insecurities are my legs. Bro, now, nah, bro, you're capping. Your legs are beautiful. And then I started wearing shorts more often, and I was like, yeah, Motel, yeah. yeah. yeah maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. they're, you know, maybe they're doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. So those are just like, yeah, just like my top two insecurities that I'm currently overcoming. Um, with me, um, I feel like one of them was like wanting everybody around me to like me. Mm -hmm. I feel like my biggest thing was that I wanted everybody to be my friend and I thought, you know what, if I'm just nice, if I act a certain way, then maybe they will like me. And mm -hmm. I feel like as I started growing, I realized that, eh, can you just make for this? Because mm -hmm. it's so draining to make every single person around you mm -hmm. happy when I myself did that I'm unhappy myself. Mm -hmm. And I feel like once I got out of that mentality, I was like, you know what, I don't need to do that. Another one I feel like was like speaking up for myself. Mm -hmm. One of my biggest fears was like confrontation. Like I hate it. Like every time someone would be like, yeah, can you have a problem? I would be like, I actually don't want to talk about this anymore. Mm -hmm. But now we're going to talk about it today. Yeah, <laughs> but now. <laughs> no, but it's not. Now I'm going to deal with you because now. I'm worried. Mm -hmm. So you know, I've just learned to like speak up when I'm upset, when I'm sad. And I feel like I am better at expressing my feelings as much as sometimes it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But like I now speak up. And another one is my arms. I don't know why I used to do that, but like I always used to cover my arms because I felt like they were too big mm. for my body. And I remember like I would always tell my friends and be like, actually, I think you're crazy. And I used to be like, and then I started seeing what everybody else saw. Yeah. And then I realized, Hore, you know, I was listening to other people's perceptions. So now I just think I'm perfect. No, yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining me. This was an amazing final episode. Yeah. Lots of love. See you next time. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's good.